devoted to helping all beings achieve health in ways by accessing the deepest truth of who they are first and foremost. And she has been on this quest for the past 30 years. Her path has led her, led her to a fitness and movement, nutrition, and human energy fields, and bringing these aspects all together. She's certified in, uh, as a yoga teacher, black belt, which is your highest uh, in Nia technique. Uh, Reiki Tumo. Okay, Reiki Tumo. She's a master um, of, of the Reiki Tumo. She studied with Michael Stone. If you don't know, he's from Toronto. He's amazing. He's got wonderful books out, World on Balance, and uh, he's just a, a wonderful, wonderful uh, yogi. Um, and uh, she's dedicated to using all this knowledge and sharing it with us so we can raise our own level of being and uh, be the best. Hi everyone. Again, thank you very much for the, the time and the love and the energy that you put into uh, the food that you made this evening. What I would actually like to start with tonight is a meditation because my talk this evening is centering around conscious eating. So I'm actually not um, a proponent of any particular diet. Uh, what I try to encourage people to do is to eat as consciously as possible. Often we do find that it sends us in the direction of whole foods and living foods and uh, more vegetarian or plant-based foods. Um, but what I found, find as a practitioner is that when I'm working with my clients, one of the best ways to help them to access the diet that works for them is to encourage them to look for the inner expert. So each one of us um, has inside of us guidance that is available to us. What I often find with my clients and um, my students is that many of them are confused about food choices, they're frustrated sometimes, they're, they feel that they're getting different um, viewpoints, even in the raw food world. You know, they think, oh, just eat raw, but you know, there's high fat raw, there's low fat raw, there's no fruit, there's no dehydrated foods. It, gets, it can get very confusing. And so ultimately, what you want to learn to do is to listen to the inner expert. I always say that the birds and bears and the wild animals, they don't need a book to tell them uh, how to eat. It's all there inside of us. And uh, while it's helpful to get advice and to be inspired by people um, who are on this path, ideally, um, if you want to individualize your diet, a good way to do that is to look for the inner expert inside. The laws of nutrition are written in your heart and in your cells, not necessarily in a book. A, a, an author might want to portray that or to convey that in his or her words, but uh, ultimately, uh, when we take this responsibility for a deep dive into ourselves, we can get this clear guidance. So, um, one of the things that I found when I first got into this field um, is that I was teaching people about what they should do to become healthy, whether it was fitness or nutrition. And what I realized very early on was that even though people can, can they can memorize you know, what you tell them to do, they can get it on a, on a mental level, but actually taking that and making it into a lifestyle that works for them is a totally different thing. And the main reason for that is that we don't make choices with our minds. We make choices with our emotions to a great extent, mm -hmm. right? And so, in order to really access that true place, we need to work our way through the emotions. And for me, meditation has been a wonderful source of that. So, I thought we would start with uh, a little bit of going in and uh, see where that takes us. So, make yourselves comfortable. And if you're wearing glasses, you might want to take them off. Try to see if you can place your feet flat on the floor. So 
take a moment to really allow your body to settle into your chair. To allow your sit bones to reach into the surface of your chair. To feel the support of the floor beneath you. And to feel the earth that supports this building and that solidity, that place that you can really rest into. And in that resting down, in that surrendering down, allow the belly to soften. As the belly softens, feel your breath opening and reaching into that soft place. A soft belly is an invitation for the breath to deepen, to reach every part of our being. And don't force the breath in any way, just allow it to open and expand in its own time, in its own way. To fill your entire being, this blessed body in which you are journeying through this life. So many times people have a sense that meditation is a spiritual practice. And it is, but it's also a very physical practice. Meditation is about bringing us really fully into the physical body, recognizing the sacredness between the union of the physical body and the spiritual essence that has inhabited this body since the beginning of your time on this planet. And so both, and attention to both, are absolutely essential in order for us to heal. And in order for us to really manifest who we really are, our true essence, in this lifetime. For me, that is, is my greatest joy and my greatest longing. How is it that I can live in such a way that I am reflecting <coughs> as clearly as possible my true essence? Can I bring that forward into my relationships, into my work, into my service, into my leisure time. And all the choices that we make are meant to support this marrying of the body and the soul. So notice that in your experience right now, you're aware of various details of this moment. Most of us are probably aware of our bodies, maybe a sense of fullness in our tummies. Maybe as we begin to close our eyes and, and relax, we may feel some fatigue, perhaps some warmth and some vibration that's coming from the center of our being as a result of the lovely food that we've just eaten. So there are all kinds of sensations happening in this physical body. So just acknowledge that and allow those sensations to be as they are. The other detail that you'll be aware of is the fact that there are thoughts constantly being generated some of them may be relevant, some of them may go into the past, some may go into the future, some of them may be 
logical, others may just randomly come in. So in meditation, we're not trying to stop the thoughts. We acknowledge that the mind generates thoughts, that's what it does. And we can just allow those thoughts to be and let go of pushing them away or <coughs> grasping them. The other thing that often will come up when we sit in stillness is various emotions that sit in our beings. Some of them are just passing through. Others may be very familiar to us. In fact, some of them are constant companions. And these emotions are felt as sensations in our body. Maybe a heaviness in the heart or a tightness in the throat. And so I would encourage you to allow those to be as they are too. Everything is welcome here. Everything is welcome. Meditation is not a separating of your life into that which you like and that which you don't like. It is a coming together of everything that makes up this moment in its entirety. The other thing you'll notice is sounds and smells. These, these two make up the various details of this moment. So that's the surface experience. And yet beneath the surface, even as these details are changing, there is something here in me and in you that is unchanging from one moment to the next. Can you feel it? There is something here gazing out from behind your eyes and shining out from behind your pores that is the exact same presence that gazed out from behind your eyes as a newborn and that shone out from behind your pores as a newborn. There is something here that is unborn, undying, untouched, unaffected, unconditioned. It's the place beyond beliefs, the place beyond circumstances, beyond emotions. And it is our true teacher, it's our beloved. sense of that presence. And let yourself rest there. Sweet rest and stillness. Nothing to be solved, no striving, nothing to change, nothing to fix. Deep breath in and open your eyes whenever you're ready.